Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and I'm here with another pajama story time for you. And once again, my daughter Vivian is joining us. She really likes doing the story times with me, so much so that she's been recording her own at home. It's been a lot of fun, I wish you guys could see it. So, should we get started with our pajama story time song? Uh-huh. Okay. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you want to read a book, say shh. If you want to read a book, say shh. If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, say shh. Perfect. So we're all ready for our first story. You guys can sit down and get comfortable. Are you in your jammies? Are you in your comfy jammies yet? Or at least have like a snuggle buddy with you or a comfy blanket or some slippers or something like that. We're comfy in our jammies right now. And I have two snuggle buddies. And Vivian has two snuggle buddies with her. This, and she is my snuggle buddy. Uh -huh. So this if is, you're, as long as you're comfortable, whatever it is that you have, uh -huh. that's fine. We can get started on our first book. This is I Dare You Not to Yawn. Mm. I dare, oh, dare you mm. not to yawn and this is by yeah. Helene Boudreau mm. <laughs> yawns are sneaky they can creep up on you when you least expect them sneaky little buggers there you are, minding your own business, building the tallest block tower in the history of the universe, or dressing up the cat, <laughs> which I'm sure the cat does not like, <laughs> when suddenly your arms stretch up, your eyes squish tight, your mouth opens wide, your tongue curls back, and you're being sent upstairs to get your pajamas on. Can we move you back a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Pajamas lead to bedtime stories. Bedtime stories lead to sleepy time songs. And sleepy time songs lead to good night hugs and kisses. Before you know it, you're tucked into bed, snug as a bug, and wondering, how did I get here? So, if you're not ready to go to bed, follow these tips and do not yawn. If someone else yawns, like your baby brother or your big sister or the dog, ah, look away. Yawns are like colds. They spread. Don't look at anybody yawning. Stay away from huggable stuffed animals, soft cozy pajamas, and your favorite blankie because mm, those can make you feel snuggly. Avoid bedtime stories about sleepy baby animals, like tiger cubs arching their backs in one last stretch, their eyes squished tight and their tongues curled back. Or you might start to feel stretchy too. Don't sing sleepy time songs about twinkling stars or bang sheep, especially the counting kind. One sheep, two sheep, ba ba ba. And whatever you do, whatever you do, don't think of droopy-eyed baby orangutans holding their long arms out for a hug from their mamas. Their little mouths forming perfect O's. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 if you try all of these things, but still a yawn creeps up and grabs a hold of you, quick, cover your mouth, you keep it from escaping. Because if your arms stretch up, uh-huh, your eyes squish tight, your mouth opens wide, your tongue curls back, oh, and a 
yawn pops out. Mm -hmm. Then off to bed you go. See, I told you, yawns are sneaky. The end. So, don't yawn for the rest of this story time at least. And you won't go off to bed. Not yet, at least. I never okay. stay away from my stuffed animals. Because oh, they make you feel all snuggly and cuddly, which could lead to yawning, which could lead to bedtime. <sighs> oh, mm. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> okay, I'd make sure that yawn didn't escape. Let's wake up with a song, okay? Because that book kind of made us sleepy and those yawns might have made us sleepy. So let's start off with us, let's wake us up with a song. So we're going to do, hi, my name is Joe. So this one can get a little tricky because it takes a lot of coordination. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do the top half and Vivian's gonna do the bottom half because I can't get everything to fit in the screen. But you guys can try to do it all together. Ready? Okay. It goes like this. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I got a wife and one kid. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. He said, push this button with your right hand. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I got a wife and two kids. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. He said, push this button with your left hand. Hi, my name is Joe and I work in a button factory. I got a wife and three kids. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. He said, push this button with your right foot. Now this part, Vivian's gonna do while I continue to do the top part because then otherwise I gotta go like this and it's gonna be, all right, well, we'll give it a try. Okay, ready? Just your right foot, just your right foot. Okay, ready? And hi, my name is Joe and I work in a button factory. I got a wife and four kids. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. He said, push this button with your left foot. So now we got two fingers and two feet. Let's see those two feet. There they are, two feet. Okay, all at the same time. Ready? And hi, my name is Joe and I work in a button factory. I got a wife and five kids. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. He said, push this button with your head. Okay, ready? Now you have two fingers, two feet, and your head. Okay. All at once. Please do the head, because I can't do I'll the head. I'll do the head, you do the feet. Okay, ready? And, hi, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. I got a wife and six kids. And one day my boss said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, yes! Oh, finally, my goodness. Finally that song is over. That's an exhausting one. Yes. Yeah, especially when you have to do all five parts yourself. Yeah, it wasn't so bad because I didn't have to do the feet. <laughs> but when you do all five of them yourself, it's pretty tiring. So, yeah, she might be kind of tired right now because she had to do the feet. So let's move on to our next book, please. Please, thank you. Please, let's move on to our next book. And this is 10 Rules of the Birthday Wish by Beth Ferry and Tom Lichtenheld. 10 Rules of the Birthday Wish. So if you have a birthday coming up, you might want to pay attention to this one. There are, there are most definitely 10 very specific, tried and true, and absolutely essential rules for the making of a birthday wish. In case of any confusion about the numbers of rules, place your hands here. So, 
five fingers on each hand, 10. Rule number one, it must be your birthday or close to your birthday. Sometime in the last or next week, your age should have increased by one, unless you are a beetle, bug, or insect. If your life cycle is a month or a week or only a single day, please celebrate immediately. ASAP, flutter, flap, fly, right on over to rule number two. Rule number two, you must have a party. A celebration, hoopla, or jamboree. There definitely should be games and laughter and definitely hats. Hats immediately elevate the party mood. Food is also a good idea. See rule number three. As are streamers, confetti, and balloons. Unless... You are a rhinoceros. As you can see there, balloons aren't a good thing to have around a rhinoceros. If you are a rhinoceros, a swordfish, a sea urchin, or pointy in any way, you may want to skip the balloons. Rule number three, you must have cake, or cannoli, or cream puffs, or churros. Your dessert does not specifically have to start with the letter C, even if some of the best desserts do, the letter could be P or B or even I. Whatever letter your dessert starts with, it must be sturdy enough to accommodate rule number four. Rule number four, you must have a light or lights to blow out. Traditionally, this would be a candle, but it could also be a sparkler, unless you are a whale or a frog. If you, you are a whale, you may want to invite some fluorescent jellyfish to your party. If you are a frog, consider using fireflies as your candles and your dessert. Combining rules is completely acceptable. Either way, something light must go out. Rule number five, there must be singing. Traditionally, the happy birthday song, sung happily and loudly and definitely off key, unless your friends are feathered. If you're lucky enough to have friends who can warble, croon, and carry a tune, sit back and enjoy the show. Rule number six, you must close your eyes. Closing your eyes keeps your wish safe inside your head, where it can grow from something ordinary into something extraordinary. Rule number seven, you must take a deep breath. This will ensure the success of rule number nine, unless you are a puffer fish. If you are a puffer fish, Definitely do not take a big breath because then you will puff up and all your guests will be concerned. Everyone knows a puffed up puffer fish is not a happy puffer fish and happy is a big part of birthday. Rule number eight, you must make a wish. Just one wish, a single, wonderful, amazing wish. It can be a big wish or a little wish. It can be a now wish or a later wish but it should definitely be a can't think of anything greater wish. Rule number nine, you must blow out the candles in one single breath, unless you are a camel. If you are a camel, you will most likely spit on the cake as you are blowing out the candles. No one wants to eat cake spritzed with camel spit. Um, so please ask your friends to help. Combining breaths is completely acceptable. Rule number 10, don't forget that wish ends in shh. So keep your wish quiet, silent, hush, hush. And when the fun is done and your friends have left and the moon is high in the sky, Close your eyes and dream of your wish coming true. The 
end. I hope you remember that because that was a lot, especially for all those exceptions. Like if you're a camel or a whale or a bug or something like that, that's just, that's all a lot to, to, uh, to think about. I think we need to do one more song before we do our last book. I think we need to do one more song. Since we talked about whales in that book, let's do orca whale. So if you can go like this, that's your orca whale jumping out of the water. If you can go like this, those are your sea scallops. If you can go like this, that's your sea otter. And if you can go like this, that's your puffer fish, which is also, you know, something else that was mentioned in that book. There was a puffer fish in that book too. So it goes like this when we put them all together. An orca whale, an orca whale, little sea scallops and an orca whale, an orca whale, an orca whale, little sea scallops and an orca whale, sea otter, sea otter, little sea scallops and an orca whale, sea otter, sea otter. Little sea scallops and an orca whale, a puffer fish. <gasps> <laughs> a puffer fish. <gasps> Little sea scallops and an orca whale. And that's it. Something wrong with your ear? No. No? You just keep holding your ear there. Okay. All right. We have one more story for our pajama story time. This is Simon's New Bed. And this is by Christian Trimmer. So this is Simon. This is Simon's bed. This is not Simon. And Simon, look at Simon. He looks a little distraught, maybe. Hmm? See that there? He's looking a little, he's got a big frown. Hold on, I want to see these things. Okay. Well, okay. Well, you can, no, well, now's time to, now it's time to read the book. It's time to read the book now. Okay. Simon's new bed. bed. What do you think of your new bed, Simon? You like it? Okay, Simon, let's go for a walk. You can try out your new bed when we get back. Simon's New Bed by Christian Trimmer. Simon couldn't remember the last time he was so excited. This was going to be the best nap of his life. He quickly rehydrated. There he is, getting something to drink. And then he sprinted to the room he shared with his best friend, the boy, only to discover a problem. What could that be? <gasps> What's that? It looks like there's a cat in Simon's bed. Um, excuse me, Miss Adora Bell. You're in the wrong bed. That's my new bed. Well, Miss Adora Bell doesn't seem to care about that. Since politeness didn't work, Simon tried other methods to get Miss Adora Bell off of his bed. He howled, Get off! <laughs> he barked, Move! Move, 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 move! Move, move, move! He dragged her from his room, <laughs> down the hall, into the kitchen, under the dining room table, and out the back door, through the yard, up the front steps, and back to his room. But like all cats, Miss Adorabelle had a, you've got to see it to believe it, sense of balance. So there he is, dragging his bed with Miss Adorabelle on it, all through the yard, and she's not moving an inch. Then Simon tried giving her a taste of her own medicine. Let's see how she likes it. Hmm. There he is, trying to squeeze his big body on her little bed. But Miss Adorabelle didn't seem to mind. <laughs> he even tried to trick her. There he's got a toy on a string. He's trying to tempt Miss Adorabelle out of the bed. Still nothing. 
Simon realized he had only one option left. One shameful, embarrassing option. He begged. Please get out of my bed! But Miss Adorabelle didn't move an inch. Simon was on the verge of tears. He had tried everything he could think of to get that mean old cat off of his bed. But what if, Miss Adorabelle, how about we share? Oh, Miss Adorabelle is like, hmm, well, maybe. She gets up and stretches and slides herself over to the other side of the bed. Simon didn't relish the idea of sharing his bed with Miss Adorabelle for his very first nap on it. But sometimes you have to pick your battles. And there they are, snuggled together on their bed both enjoying a nap. The end. And that was Simon's new bed. I like that book. It's pretty silly. I like Simon. Are we ready for our silly lullaby? Yep. Are you going to snuggle with me? So get yourself a snuggle buddy. It could be a stuffed animal. It could be a sibling. It could be a grown up. It could be yourself. You can give yourself a big hug. It can be a blanket. It can be a pillow. It can be anything you need to make you feel snuggly. And we'll sing our silly lullaby from Sandra Boynton. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, it's time to say achoo. The chicken's in the bathtub. The closet full of sheep. The sneakers in the freezer are drifting off to sleep. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, the owl is whispering moo. And with that, we say good night. And thank you so much for joining us for another pajama story time. I hope everybody is safe and healthy and happy and well and we will see you as soon as we can bye everybody you want to press the button off <laughs>